It's time for the big one. Nintendo Power issue 100 for September of 1997. One of the big anniversary issues. Let's see what they have in store. Our cover is the issue number and really what other character belongs on the cover, but Mario. In the letters column, we have some discussion on how to get to the top of the castle without using the cannon in Mario 64. We also, as part of a running thing this issue, have a peek at what the letters column looked like back in the day. But while I have this small, tiny little picture at the top of the page, I, mean, I can give you like a good five second or so full screen look at the previous version. So I'm gonna do that and do that for each of the sections of this issue as far as the recurring sections. We have another change in the power charts in terms of the style, but unfortunately it's not the one I've been hoping for. Game Boy is only still getting five games on their list. With the announcement of Pokemon earlier and the fact that some of the power charts rankings have had unreleased titles, I'd been hoping to see the full 10 since It'd be interesting to see if Pokemon had started to pop up on the list yet. We have an extensive section of previews of various N64 games that are still a long ways off. No nope, level maps or anything like that. Nothing for give me something, some meat to bite into to cover. Um, but lots of screenshots and gameplay descriptions. We start off appropriately enough with Zelda 64, which is Still missing the Ocarina of Time subtitle. Along we also have Yoshi's Story, which sees them using the 2.5D, or rather 2.5D terminology to refer to a game with 3D polygonal characters and level environments, but 2D platforming gameplay. Also a few rare titles. Um, we have Banjo-Kazooie, and also some more coverage of the, again, never getting released, Conker's Quest. I'm kind of going to see how many of these level concepts that we have screenshots of here get reworked into levels in Bad Fur Day. Maybe not, obviously not the exact same sprites or uh, character designs and that sort of thing, but the gameplay mechanics for some of the bosses, for example. Also, uh, the N64 is getting on the multiplayer game front a Ken Griffey Jr. baseball game. Not surprising. We've got Ken Griffey Jr. games on pretty much every other platform so far. And Hudson is putting out Bomberman 64 as well. Now, we have not gotten F-064 yet, but we do have a preview of Acclaim's Extreme G. They're shot at the high-speed futuristic racing game crown that OG, F-Zero, and Wipeout have been vying over. Wrapping things up, we have WCW vs. NWO World Tour, the first of the Aki N64 wrestling games, the ones that will sort of shift the balance and change how, frankly, wrestling games are played on consoles. And also, we have San Francisco Rush, and because they can't all be winners, Mortal Kombat Mythologies Sub-Zero. Returning to GoldenEye 64, we have strategies for multiplayer in all of the game's levels, multiplayer levels, that is, but with level maps with indicators of the best ambush spots on the map, too. As requested by the readers in some of the past letters column, we have a list of the one of 100 of the best codes, strategies, and secrets from various previous titles that were featured in Nintendo Power. In Counselor's Corner, we have, among other things, more strategies for Star Fox 64. And in classified information, we have a whole bunch of cheats and strategies for Hexen. Now, if you want to fight, they'll give you one, as we have, once again, as requested by the readers, a ranking of what the, the staff of Nintendo Power and some of Nintendo of America considers to be the best 100 video games of all time on Nintendo platforms. In some respect, this list is questionable. Top five are all first-party titles, um, including Mario 64 in the number one slot, and indeed, there are a whole bunch of N64 games in the top 10. On the other hand, I do appreciate that in spite of the rather significant falling out between Squaresoft and Nintendo, Square's titles do still make the list. With Final Fantasy 2 II and 3, or 4 and 6 in Japan, making the top 10, and Chrono Trigger making the top 20. 
Also, it's not a big Nintendo Power article without some horrifically poor layout choices that lead to barely legible text. The ranking does also have the top 10 worst games of all time, including games I haven't covered before and haven't come up enough to cover, like Color a Dinosaur, and well as a few titles who I have covered on this show, such as Baby's Kids in the number one spot. Another requ uh, requested special feature, the 100 best high scores and top times in Nintendo Power history. Interestingly, while we do get a score for Tetris, we get none of Steve Wozniak's top scores. In the now playing column, they have reworked the layout once again, with a panel of 10 staff members giving scores for each game, averaged out to an overall score, along with some more involved reviews with various notes. The three games shown this issue are all ones I reviewed before, so before, so I'm okay just moving on. And in Pack Watch, we have a look at Earthworm Jim 3 and Pulp. F1 pole position on the N64. And they didn't review anything this issue. Um, it's all looking back. We're in a bit of a look forward, but that's about it. And how was this as a retrospective then? Well, the 100 Best Games article was kind of iffy. A lot of the picks were good. I appreciated that in spite of the, at this point, existing bad blood between Nintendo and Square Enix, or Square Soft, rather. Um, we had plen plenty of Square games high up on the list, and, and the ones that we would expect to see there. And there were some titles in there that I was just pleasantly surprised to see, like Shadowrun and Alien 3 on the Super Nintendo. Also, some of the N64 games on the list were reasonable picks, like Mario 64, but I think the presence of a lot of the N64 games that are on there is a sense of recency bias that hurts the overall list. GoldenEye, it does work. It does do a lot. I mean a lot to help um, to build on the first person shooter genre on consoles. That works well. Mario 64 definitely belongs there. It frankly, did a tremendous job of innovating on the 3D platformer, and a lot of games that came after would be to, would be learning the lessons that Mario 64 taught and trying to innovate based on that. But Tetrisphere? One of the 100 greatest games of all time as of this issue on Nintendo consoles? Not even close. I think the biggest missed opportunity of the issues, though, or a couple big ones. One is a missed opportunity to do something with the power charts. It would have been great to revisit the power charts and do a new top 20 for all of um, Nintendo systems to date. Not just the NES and the Super Nintendo. Um, the NES having had, we printed, I believe, like their ultimate or final one or something in a few issues past. But like reprinting that, um, doing a new updated Super Nintendo one, a new Game Boy one, and then also, depending on how many Game Boy, like N64 titles are actually out at this point and how many they have poll results for, having a similar one for the N64, for the N64 as well. Even if it's only 15 games or 10 games for the N64, um, or like, even if it's 15 games, but having that ranking would be great as well. It would give a sense of where the new systems are at, where the classic system is, and where the um, slowly on its way out and the one that's still kind of a going concern, that is the Super Nintendo being on its way out and the still ongoing Game Boy, where they stand as well. Also, while certainly Nintendo Power has been reprinting a lot of game strategy guides lately, one of, I think, the important legacies of the Nintendo of Nintendo Power Magazine prior to this point has been its maps, uh, the screenshot level maps. We're approaching a point with the N64 where those are less viable of a thing. And it would have been nice 
as we're coming to the end of that era to take a look back at the some of the great maps we've had in the history of Nintendo Power, um, both for the Super, both for the not just the, the Super Nintendo, but the NES and the Game Boy as well. I'd like to get to see some of the screenshot maps for our once again for um, Metroid, for the original OG Legend of Zelda, maybe even um, stuff like RC Pro Am, the course maps from RC Pro Am, and that sort of thing. Just kind of um, reprinting those as well to have this legacy of here's here's what we had in the past when we were dealing with 2D games. And this is what we'll be doing with the future with the GoldenEye maps for 3D games. It's a missed opportunity there. Um, it would have been worth it, I think. This issue was like 125 pages, 115 pages. It would have been worthwhile, I think, to go just to go up to 150 pages, particularly sitting around this time, EGM and similar magazines are going to like 300 pages, uh, 250 pages. Um, each issue. So, ha so giving a little bit of oomph for something as a much of a big deal as your hundredth issue would be worthwhile. Would have been worthwhile. Next month, we return to our regular game coverage with a cover with um a high speed futuristic racing game. Not the one we want, but it's but it, it's one worth. Looking forward to. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any f future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. <laughs>